Hello everybody, and thank you for checking out my videos here. In this video I want to get into science, because I think the word is being misused. I, I absolutely agree. Man, you see these creationists, they make all kinds of stupid ass definitions for their science. Man, I'm glad we agree. I'm just going to keep letting you talk. Science is something you can observe, test, retest, and observe. So that's it. Science is test, observe, repeat. You know, it just got to be weird for cosmologists because they have to look into the past, you know, looking at so millions and millions of years into the past because of how long it takes for light to reach us. Or those scientists that study volcanic eruptions and earthquakes tend to their history to be able to predict future earthquakes and volcanoes. And, oh, you know, those pesky uh, scientists that are out there trying to solve murders, the ones that they don't physically see and observe, you know, they can't exactly observe and repeat killing people to be able to verify which way this person uh, was murdered. But, you know, that's not science at all. There's something about the word observe that really just confuses the shit out of creationists because they think that scientists have to observe something uh, for it to be science. Well, no, science, they gather evidence and make observations to be able to make conclusions and to, you know, figure out stuff that we need to learn. There's a difference. Science also means to know. Well, technically, science comes from the Latin scientia, meaning knowledge. But yeah, I guess we're you know, splitting hairs here. And a lot of the things being pushed as science are things that you cannot possibly know, but people act as if you can. Yeah, a lot of weird things out there, you know, like pre-flood earth conditions that radically changed the origins of the earth and how its makeup was, you know, saying things like there was a, an increased oxygen content and increased barometric pressure uh, able to allow animals to be three, four times their size or hell, even the, the possibility of a magical sky being able to will things into existence. So if we follow this line of reasoning, and creationists say things like there's a pre-flood conditions or the speed of light was faster than it was but you know that it is now then then this means that it's not observable testable or repeatable because this was all in the past therefore all of these claims are not science he has just refuted himself good job sir golf clap for you and it's actually quite ridiculous if you think about it. I agree. But we have all been indoctrinated into it that we buy into it. The creationist Christian is going to talk about indoctrination. Let's talk about indoctrination, shall we? Indoctrination is the process of inculcating. Inculcating, by the way, is my new word of the day, which means to instill, by the way, for those of you that are like me and don't know words for shit. So the process of instilling ideas, attitudes, cognitive strategies, or professional methodology, see doctrine, which to me is hilarious. Uh, it is often distinguished from education by the fact that the indoctrinated person is expected to not question or critically examine the doctrine that they have learned. And I just find it hilarious. When people try to say that science is indoctrinating kids, let's look at the scientific method and pretty much how it works. The first thing you do is you ask a question, which is the last thing you're allowed to do when you're being indoctrinated by something or by a religion or any cause. You're supposed to just blindly follow it. You then you do your background research. Then you construct a hypothesis. You test your hypothesis and by doing an experiment. You analyze your data and draw a conclusion, and then you communicate your results. There are a few other reasons why this is an indoctrination. First is it actually making you uh, test your hypothesis, and if you are wrong, your hypothesis is proven to be wrong, then you have to kind of go back to the drawing board and figure out what the actual you know, reasoning is. Second, you have to communicate your results which means other people have to hear it and people have to be able to verify it and be able to uh, be able to come to the same conclusions that you do. So this is designed to keep you honest or point out if you've made a genuine mistake. This is not what happens in indoctrination. Indoctrination, they just cram it down your throat until you are forced to believe it. 
Now let's talk about indoctrination that can happen in religions, and more specifically Christianity. Let's talk about the some of the things that you know I personally was told growing up. Even if it wasn't any of these direct words, but this, these are the general ideas. One, you accept Jesus or you go to hell. Two, you don't do anything sinful, otherwise you go to hell. Three, actually it doesn't matter because you were sinful when you were born, so make sure you give your life to God and accept Jesus, otherwise you're going to hell. Four, God can do whatever he wants to you. You know, what Romans 9.21 says, what right does the clay have to say to the potter? God is all-powerful, so don't complain about him or what he wants from you. Romans 3.10, as it is written, None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside, together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. And then you think of songs like, with uh, like Amazing Grace, you know, that they see, you know, Amazing Grace, that saved a, a, a wretch like me. We are considered just this vile piece of trash, you know, that our, our deeds are as filthy rags to God, that, you know, we are no good, and that, you know, because of God's mercy and forgiveness, we get a chance to go to heaven. We are belittled. We are considered smaller. We are considered useless and helpless and weak, and then we need him. Otherwise, we just, we can't do anything without God. So when you tell that to a little kid, they're going to raise, be raised up thinking that they depend on God for everything. And that's what the Christians are going to be teaching the kids. They're teaching that you're supposed to turn to God for everything. That everything is dependent on God. And you're supposed to go exactly how God you know, wants you to do things. That is indoctrination. That is indoctrination. Not science. Here are some examples of Christian indoctrination. This is from Jesus Camp. I need you to get serious, serious with God. Say, God, God. I'm here to be trained. I'm here, to be trained. I'm, here I'm here for an education. I'm willing, God. I'm willing, God. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. In Jesus' name. You do things you shouldn't do. You talk dirty just like all the other kids talk dirty. And it's time to clean up your act. Come up here and get washed. Because we can't have phonies in the army of God. If that's you, put your hands up here. Whoa, baby. Wash your hands. Father, we just wash them with the water of your word. We say no more, devil, no more. Say it, boys and girls, in the name of Jesus. You know exactly what you need to repent of. Name it. Name it out loud. Name it. What do you need to be forgiven of? No more wishy-washy. No more hypocrisy. These are kids ranging from ages from like three, and I see one that looks like she was about maybe 13. There, to see the girl in the background, she's making that weird, oh, sound, because obviously she was, you know, taught this for some reason. Making all these sounds that we hear in church, and I, and I know because I was personally in a church that was just like this. I mean, there was times that I was, you know, down on my knees and crying and screaming and, you know, shaking and the laughing and all that kind of stuff that you hear and you see on these videos. And you're like, oh, my God, how are these people doing this? I went through that. I know what that was. I thought I genuinely felt something. But I was told that that was what was going to happen. I was told to expect these things. I was told from a young age that that's just how that worked and that's how the spirit worked. And this is what the spirit does when he moves through you. I was indoctrinated into that. The first thing I'd like to get into that's pushed off as science is dating methods. Uh, I don't even know some words that would be kind to say here. Oh, I agree with you there. You know, I go to those websites and they're always trying to tell me, like, here, here's five ways to please a woman, ten things women like, ten things that'll make women go crazy, and it doesn't fucking work, because I'm still single, so I totally agree with you. We need to deal with this dating method bullshit that we see out there. But I would like to start off by looking at the layers of the earth. 
to say that they formed over millions of years, each layer, is not science. Oh, by dating you meant radiometric dating. I, I guess I can cover that too. You can't possibly know that. You would have to have lived for millions of years to observe it to happen, and then lived for millions of years more to see it rehappen. You guys are catching what he's saying here, right? He's saying that in order to be science, which even though I've already shown why that's bullshit, we have to be alive for millions of years to observe it happen. But then he also says we have to watch it happen again because of the observing, you know, testing, observing, and repeating thing. So in other words, we have to watch the geologic column form multiple times for us to verify how it happened. Well, if we apply your same logic, that means we can't show that it was a flood that laid down the sediments because we, can't, we didn't observe and watch it happen again. And we also can't prove that it was 6,000 years ago, so we're on the same footing! Good job! Another golf clap! To really get into these layers and how they would have formed, you would have to be open to the Bible. And there we have it, folks. The Bible! Fuck those scientists in the past that have been studying the sediment depositions, you know, for the, all of these years that they've been studying it. Fuck those creationist geologists that started off at about 1800 that were trying to prove how God did it and study the geologic column and studied what made them depo you know, deposit in the way that they did. But no, let's go with the Bible because, you know, also fuck all of those other religious texts that try to describe, uh, you know, a global flood because we're supposed to trust just the Bible. Because... In the Bible, we're told about a worldwide flood, and in many other cultures, we're told about a worldwide flood. Yes, you are correct. There are many nations and civilizations that talked about a flood story, that all they all have their own flood myths, which, of course, doesn't really fucking matter because there's no you know physical evidence for it. But if we want to go by who's telling the flood myth, we want to go with the one that told it first because they're the ones that told it first, and their stories passed on to the later generations. And the, the Bible is not the first telling of a flood myth. The Sumerians were the first ones to talk about a flood myth long before the Bible. So I think you should actually be following the Sumerian religions, which I don't think you will. And that would show us and prove to us why we would have these layers because there's a thing called hydraulic sorting when I was a kid I had this little toy that looked like a I guess like a small ant farm it just flat pieces of glass stuck together and there was black sand white sand and water in it and you could tip it upside down sideways left to right and you could watch the water sort the sand by a black line, white line, black line, white line, and it would repeat. And that's hydraulic sorting. The denser material falls faster, and then the lighter material, and this process keeps repeating, and that's how you get the layers. And that's the same thing we see in the earth. Nice, even layers repeating as if they were hydro hydraulically sorted. That's not entirely accurate. Many times throughout the geologic record we see rocks of higher density being above the lower density rocks. We see sometimes where the lower density rocks and the higher density rocks are all mixed matched in one layer by themselves. That is not a product of hydraulic sorting. And to get back to this whole there is no evidence or anything, well let's deal with some things that I have yet to see any creationist be able to really respond to. Uh, let's talk about how there's you know, layers of volcanic ash between different layers. Now, we're expected to assume that during the flood, we had a whole bunch of volcanoes going off. I mean, other than the fact that the clouds would produce enough SO2 and CO2 that no one company would have died, not been able to breathe, and it would, it would change our atmosphere to an extent that 
you know, basically so many things would die. Uh, how would the volcanic ash be able to settle with all the floods going on? And then between specific layers, it's almost as if, you know, the, the waves would have stopped for a second and the volcanic ash would have been able to settle because it takes a long ass time for really light uh, ash to be able to settle to the ground or to the floor of that, you know, body of water. Um, and then more sediments would have to deposit on, and then would it stop again, and then more volcanic ash, and then it would go on again. You know, it just doesn't make any sense there. Uh, we also have uh, limestone that takes, you know, that, that are thousands of meters thick that can only take very incredibly long periods of time. You can't produce limestone with just heat and pressure. It takes many, 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 many years. It would not have been able to have been produced in the one year during the flood. Now I challenge a creationist to go try and create some limestone. Do it. Please, go for it. Try it. We also have a bunch of meteorite impacts that are in the soil. So you'd have to imagine like right in the middle of a flood, just every meteorite that has ever hit the earth decided to happen that one year in which there was the flood. Also, if there was a flood, we would actually be seeing marine fossils everywhere and not just in the cities and little areas in which we know that there was a shallow sea before they would be scattered all over now this is just a few of the things that creationists need to be able to explain but they can't um, i just wanted to address the top few that i could remember offhand or i just kind of just grabbed a few examples after that uh, but this is going to be the end of this first part. Uh, this is, video is taking way longer than I thought it was going to be, so I'm going to split this up into two parts uh, to make it a little more palatable for you guys. I know listening to me for so long can be kind of annoying. I know. I have to hear it too. Anyways, so uh, this will be the first one. I should be finished with the rest of the video, and it should probably be done by the end of the day, so it'll still be out. But anyways, this is it. Uh, this is the end of part one. You'll see part two soon. This is the Atheist Chef signing off. Peace.